How can I face another day? And those types of things change your life. What? Just getting my rocket stove on the go there now. Just gonna have a cup of tea today and a little snack. And also welcome to the first uh, episode, I guess you call it, of uh, your topic, my take. And right off the beginning here, I'm gonna say that I am no expert in anything. I always say that because I'm not. And these videos that I'm going to do in this series, I'll do one every now and then. If you guys have a topic, I'll give you my take if you want it. These videos are not meant to be, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. They're about answering questions or talking about a topic uh, for a very select few group, of, a small group of people. And it might just be a hundred people, it might be ten people, five, two, or just one. And if it answers one person's question or helps out a person, then isn't it worth it, really? Got to keep that air intake open on these rocket stoves. Some of you guys have asked me that. Main thing, make sure you got that airflow. Don't put in too many sticks or whatever and choke off the airway. The first topic that we're going to discuss, or I'm going to give my take on, is your topic of anxiety. And, uh, and all the things that are associated with anxiety, which can be very, very serious. And of course, I get a lot of messages and comments uh, all the time through this channel and I get a lot of private messages from from some of you guys that are, you know thank me and others for putting out videos like this because you're going through either a temporary or you have a chronic uh, state of anxiety and to watch a video like this in the outdoors in the open the fresh air and a fire and a little lunch it kind of gives you that break from that uh, absorption of the world that's sometimes negative you know and i get that um i'm a generally a very happy person of course i'm normal just like anybody else so there's times in my life when i've experienced uh, anxiety of course who wouldn't i mean you'd be superhuman if you didn't now i thought about this topic of course i gave it a lot of thought because it's a very serious topic and you got to be almost careful what you say so, you know, uh, again, this is my take and I'm nobody. When I grew up, you never heard the word anxiety. You knew it was a word, but nobody ever used it. Oh, this person has anxiety. It's the same thing as bullying and all that stuff and harassment. You rarely ever heard those things back in the day. You know, we went through school and there was people experiencing anxiety, but we never really knew what it was. But as of the last few years, of course, it's a... It's a huge topic because people go through it. And there's a difference, the way I look at it, there's a difference in people who experience real anxiety. People who have anxiety, or whether it's a short term or a long term, it can be very, very serious, as I mentioned. I've gotten to know uh, a few of you over the years. I've never met you, 
but I often message some of you and you guys know who you are. I would never mention anyone's name or anyone's specific situation, but I keep in touch with people who, who are experiencing hard times because maybe just maybe it'll uh, help them through it. And I have talked about my personal, uh, you know, dealings with anxiety again, very temporary. I was born uh, with a blessing in the fact that I have this thing where I wake up in the mornings and I am instantly happy. In fact, I can't stay in bed in the mornings because usually when I open my eyes and I become somewhat conscious, I immediately am excited about the day. Even though I might not have anything planned special for that day, I just generally wake up excited. I'm excited to have a coffee or I'm excited to have my breakfast. I'm excited to put wood in the stove. I'm excited to look outside to see what type of day it is. And that's just the way that I was made. And again, uh, you know, if I was to ask for something in life, I, I, I would have asked for that in the beginning. I just lucked out. Other people are obviously not the same. Some people find it hard to make it through each day. They find it when they wake up in the morning, they don't want to get out of bed. And those type of people, I would coin myself, not being anyone again, as a person who experiences true anxiety, which is probably leading to depression. And of course, if you're not motivated to do anything, then you kind of mope around a bit. And by not moving around and doing things, then you kind of get more into a slump. And of course, that just kind of snowballs. And that's who this video is for. Because we're all human beings, and human beings and human nature is funny, and I analyze things because I spend a lot of time in the woods, and I spend a lot of time alone, and sometimes I think about situations, you know. And as human beings, sometimes we notice others are getting attention because they're doing whatever they're doing. And I've seen an evolution in anxiety over the years where it's getting kind of watered down. And that's a shame, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But what I mean by that is sometimes if one person sees another person is getting attention and comfort because they're experiencing true anxiety, then they may think to themselves, I wouldn't mind having some of that attention. So I think I will start having anxiety. And so they profess to be this person that's filled with anxiety when really it may not be anxiety at all. What I mean by it being watered down, some of my close friends will know exactly what I'm gonna say now, because I could hardly believe when I heard this. Uh, it was on a radio station a while back, I was just traveling along the highway, and not really listening to the radio, but kind of listening to it at the same time. And there was a person who was opening up a new restaurant. And they were talking about this new restaurant and now they were going to cater to their customers in the most ultimate way. They were getting the most plush seating. So when you sat down, it would be wonderful. They were having the state-of-the-art climate control so the temperature would be perfect while you were there. The walls and everything was going to be designed around booths so you could be kind of to yourself and no one could really hear what you were saying. They even went as far as to say that when they bring out their food, whether it be an appetizer or an entree or a dessert, they were going to make sure there was only one fork, the applicable fork for that particular dish because they did not want anyone to experience fork anxiety and I remember cocking my head to the side and I said did I just hear that is it possible they just said fork anxiety no it can't be and I listened to it intently then and of course they mentioned it again because they did not want someone to have to choose what fork if there were two or three on the table then it would cause someone undue anxiety and I'm going to go out on a limb here for a second, guys. And again, it's a hard topic, but I don't want to offend anyone. If that's the depth of your anxiety in your life, if you can go to a nice plush restaurant and spend a 50 or or 
on a supper and sit in this wonderful climate controlled room with this plush seating and the lights just dim so. And if that's all you have to worry about is what fork you have to pick out, then myself, along with all of these other people that experience true anxiety, want your life. Because really, that isn't anxiety at all. If it's anything, it's a minor inconvenience. It's a blip that means absolutely nothing in the big picture. I don't think anybody who experiences fork anxiety is contemplating whether or not they will live on this earth another day. Folks, true anxiety should never be watered down by things such as that. True anxiety is either can be caused, say, uh, by a traumatic event. You know, you have a sudden death in the family, or maybe something happened, uh, you know, a sexual assault, or chemical imbalance in the brain, or being diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. And those types of things change your life, either suddenly or over time, to the point where your life resets. Your life goes from happy-go-lucky, growing up as a kid or whatever, having no worries, to all of a sudden starting over brand new. And that big world that was around you and is all exciting and you're getting all these influences all around, all of a sudden it narrows in to one particular thought process. How can I get past this anxiety? How can I face another day? Do I want to face another day. That is true anxiety. Again, as I mentioned, I'm just like anybody else. I've faced uh, things in my life that have been traumatic, and it did restart my life in that it went from page whatever in my life to page one. And your focus changes, and everything around you doesn't really matter anymore other than what's going to happen from here on in. And to talk about this kind of stuff for those people who message me and when I talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'm one of those people who have, it's only now, you know, it's been years behind me and I'm 100% wonderful. I feel I could run a marathon tomorrow and life is good for me right now. I'm living my dream. You see that in my videos. So life is good right now. But I still remember. How could you forget something like that? And little trigger things put you back there. And I know that feeling. And I know the feeling of someone coming up to me in Tim Hortons or Walmart and just who hardly even know you, come along and they'll, how you doing, boy? And just give you a little punch on the shoulder and say, ah, Chuck, boy, you got this. And then they walk away and they continue their shopping and they go out for supper with their wife and they sit down and watch Netflix and they have you forgotten. I know the feeling of that and the irritation that comes from that because you know that that person does not have a single clue what you're going through. But those people who have experienced true anxiety know what others are feeling. So when you guys tell me that you don't know how you're going to face tomorrow, then I can enter into your feelings. Now, I've never had drastic thoughts. I was just always in survival mode. What can I do tomorrow? So you ask me, how did you deal with it? How would you deal with it if it happened again tomorrow? Because none of us is, is exempt from this, right? Something could happen today, tomorrow, next week, and all of a sudden, you're that person. Well, what I would do is I would have a bad day, and I would tell myself one of the biggest cliches you've ever heard. But it's all I had at the moment, and I would tell myself, tomorrow is going to be a better day. And that next day would come and I would feel exactly the same. And I would tell myself then, tomorrow is going to be a better day. And if the next day came, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but it kind of puts me back there, right? If the next day came and I still felt that way, I would tell myself, 
tomorrow is going to be a better day. And I would tell myself that every day until that day would come, and it would, where you'd feel better. You'd feel uh, rejuvenated, you'd have more energy, and you felt more positive. And, you'd, and I'd tell myself, ha-ha, I told you, the next day could be bad again. But I would always cling to those days when everything was good. Because, see, you got to look at it. When you're happy, and I'm generally extremely happy to the point where it probably annoys people around me, that when something is not right, it's a larger fall, right? Life is about this, going up and down, up and down. And in certain places, when you're very happy and something happens, you go way down. And this happens instead of this. The goal in life is to keep it like this. The other piece of advice that I would give is a very strong one. At the end of every video, you hear me say, take care of each other, get outside and enjoy everything outdoor. That is one of the truest things you will ever hear me say. If you're in that state and you're down, you're probably going to be in town and you're going to have your phone and you're going to be scrolling things or you're watching TV. And what actually makes it through television and social media and makes things popular? It's not a good news video like this. I will never become popular because of this video. Because there's no drama into it. There's no bashing of people. There's no gossip. It's extremely boring, really. Because our minds are tuned now to and are attracted to drama and negativity and disturbing incidents. Just look at the news and, oh, this happened or that happened. Oh, <gasps> so a house caught on fire or, you know, or there was a mass shooting somewhere. And people are drawn to that. And then they pick up their phone and they scroll Facebook or Instagram or anywhere on their phone. And everything there is geared towards drama and negativity and things that will penetrate your mind and it will soil it. Because that's all, your mind is like a sponge and you're taking in all this stuff all day long. And if you were to admit it, you'd probably hours of day where you're trying to go through this and your mind gets geared towards it and it rots your mind. All of those things are no good for your mind. So what I do, the reason why I spend time alone in the woods with my dogs and have a cup of tea and I get away from any sort of cell signal. I get away from all of that negative influence. And where are we right now? Everything around me right now is real. These trees are real. This snow is real. These dogs are real. This sky and this sun that's behind the camera is real. This fire is real. This cup of tea I'm going to have in a moment is real. There is no drama here. There is no negativity. It's all a bunch of wonderfulness. And when you get away from all of the negativity and you go outside, it might only be for five minutes. It might be for two hours. It might be for two days. Only you will know how long that you need to be outside to refresh your mind, to reset it. If not, you're polluting it every day. You go to bed and you're just, you're not getting away from it. There's something about it. There's a spirit behind it. Because when have you ever heard someone come back from outside on a day like this, having a cup of tea or a campfire with friends or by themselves and coming back and saying, I had the worst day ever. It was a sunny, calm day, and I went out and had a campfire and a cup of tea and a piece of bread. I can't stand what just happened today. You never hear that. You feel rejuvenated because there's something about it. And in my case, that's exactly what I do. And I like to have that balance in my life so things don't go like this and things kind of stay like that. And I would say this to anybody who's in a state of anxiety now, as I was in those temporary frames. Your life, <clears throat> on the other side of that, 
when you pull through that, you will not experience life ever as good as what you did before. I remember if I got my phone bill, and if it was a dollar twenty-five more than what it was the month before, huh, I got to get on the phone and I got to talk to four or five people. And I am so upset. What happened to my phone bill? I'm going to tell some people off here because I got a dollar twenty-five more on my phone bill this month. How silly. I'm not saying don't fight for what you believe in and stuff. Now that stuff doesn't matter to me anymore. In fact, to wake up in the morning and feel excited is everything. To have freedom to do what you want is everything. To have that positive outlook is everything. And there's no wonder I'm excited. Because when you see the darkness, then the light is so much brighter. What's that? I know, it smells good. <laughs> little rat. You talk about a traditional Newfoundland tradition. Buttered bread in the woods and molasses smothered all over it. Oh boy. I get excited about food too, if you guys didn't notice. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Cheers to the old Newfoundland traditions. It's not hot. <laughs> now to others who want to help out people who have anxiety, here's what you should do. It's a very magical thing. It's a six letter word that's getting that's lost in the art of conversation these days because conversation does not hold the same because everybody's texting each other and emailing each other now. But here's that magic word. Listen, when someone is talking to you about their situation, let them say what they have to say. Don't cut them off. Don't be that person who's, oh, I'm going to cut them off because what I've got to say to them is much, much more important, and I'm the expert here. Don't do that. Listen to people. The way they feel is going to come out through their words. It helps them, if they want to talk, then to express themselves is a form of healing. So let them talk and listen. And by listening, you will get all of their thoughts and you will be able to enter into their feelings. They will feel better. You will be more understanding of their situation. So folks, that's my take on anxiety and how to deal with it from my perspective. I hope that maybe, just maybe, it'll help out somebody. Always look forward to tomorrow. Get outside and rely on what's real around you, your faith, whatever it takes to hang on to that next day when that good day will come again. And believe you me, it will. Your mind will balance out and you'll feel good. Now, folks, given this is the first episode of uh, your topic, my take, um, there's a good friend of mine, Jonathan Gillingham. He has a photography uh, business. It's called JG Photography. And he is going to donate to one of you guys a 16 by 24 inch um, framed photograph. And I'm telling you, when you go in on his Facebook or his website and look at the photographs he's taken, it's mind-blowing. He lived in the Northwest Territories, so that's enough said right there. The scenery is spectacular, and he's going to donate any picture that you want from his website or Facebook, and uh, I'll put you in contact with him, wherever the winner's going to be, and he's going to donate a fully framed um, picture, and it's not just going to be any old frame. It's a HD frame, and I had to ask him what that means. That means high-definition metal. So it's going to be a spectacular and a very expensive uh, print that will be given right to one of the winners. All you have to do to enter the draw is to leave me your comment anyway about the video. But somewhere in that comment, leave the word JG Photography. 
And as in any contest video or any video that seems to do well, always be aware of the scammers and the spammers. They're out there everywhere. If you get a message that even looks like me with my picture on it down in the comments, do not respond to it. Do not adhere to any of the foolishness that those scammers go on with. The only, I will announce the winner to in a completely different video. So just if you get that those replies from those scammers, block them, report them. Whatever you have to do, just don't respond to them. And good luck. Anyway, guys, I'm going to head back to the cabin. I got another day ahead of me today. I'm going to cut some wood. Or I'm just, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do because I haven't made a plan yet. But I know right now, right at this moment, I'm happy. And in cluing up this video, I'll say what I always say, but you'll understand why I say it now. And that's take care of each other. Get outside and enjoy everything outdoors. And we'll see you next time. We will. Guaranteed. Get outside.